Fitting Anderson power pole connectors and a Life Po4 battery for portable and emergency operation. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So, I mentioned in a post recently that I'll be taking part in the 145 Alive event taking place on the 30th of September. That event is usually organised by people like uh, Tim, G5TM and others as well. They take time out of their busy schedules to organise that. And I'll be taking time out of my busy schedule, like I've had to do today, so I can go take part in that. So, I'm only at home at the moment because I'm actually waiting for the second of two parcels to arrive. The first one already has. That was from Soda Beams, which was this crimping tool, which is for Anderson power pole connectors. I'm sure you can see that there, and my camera's lagging a bit, so it's a bit annoying. So, the crimps will just go in there. Squeeze a handle shut and then open it up. That's the connector crimped. So, then obviously I've got to put them on the wire, so obviously got to strip the wire. So, to connect to the battery that I've ordered, which is the second parcel I'm waiting for, that will be with me shortly. The moment uh, Yodel's halfway up the Yorkshire Dales, <laughs> and that's who's delivering it. Uh, I'm going to have to make up some tails, so I've just stripped a couple of wires here. These are red and brown, because I don't actually have any black in that, in this uh, particular size of wire, which is a little bit annoying. So, But that will do, that will find. It's just a short tail, so I can plug it into this. This is a Soto Beams Fuser 6. I picked this up from the, the Blackpool Rally a few years ago, and it came as a kit of parts, which I had to build myself. And you do need quite a beefy soldering iron to do that. My soldering station was more than adequate for the job and also has an LED inside there. So if it's green, you're all right. And if it's red, well, it's obviously not all right. It means the polarity swapped. So <laughs> the idea is that there shouldn't be any red light on in there. So the battery I've ordered is an Ultramax 22 amp hour LivePo 4 battery that's actually designed for golf carts, as it turns out. <laughs> or golf trolleys, one of the two. But either way, it's going to be quite a lightweight battery that can do the job which I need it to do, so it can run my Yaesu FT991A, which I think it can do that. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. As long as I don't turn the power up too far, I should be okay, I think. But then again, it might handle the full power of the radio. On two meters, that radio is uh, 50 watts on FM and SSB, as far as I'm aware. On HF, it's usually 100 watts SSB. And I've stripped the connect the, the ends of the wire for, from the 9918 power lead ready to take Anderson power pole connectors. So that's all ready to go. So all I'm going to do next is I'm going to start attaching those. Now I'm not going to go through the whole crimping process because I'm pretty sure there's instructions already out there on how to do that. And fitting these plugs I'm pretty sure there's instructions on how to do that as well. So while I'm waiting for the battery to arrive, and I'll show you the battery once it gets here, um, and I can actually check where it is at the moment because I am able to track the the Yodel parcel driver who, it's, it's, it was up in the Yorkshire Dales, up in Swaledale I think last I checked. Yeah, he's uh, currently near Reef by the looks of it. So he should be on his way. And he says there's 12 more stops before it gets to me. So there you go. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put my phone in shot actually, I'm going to put it in my pocket. I'm going to start crimping some of these crimps on, because the crimps you get are these. You can solder these as well if you want. I'll just bring that into focus. I'm not sure if it'll focus at all on that. It's a shiny thing. It will focus there. Or maybe there. No, it doesn't want to focus on that, but you get the gist. That's the crimp for an Anderson power pole connector. The shells are all in that bag. That's a pack of five pairs. So you get ten of these crimps and you get ten of the shells, five in red, five in black. So I'm going to start crimping these on and I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, so... I had the instructions up as well, just to make sure I was doing it right, because it's been a while since I've actually um, uh, fitted uh, power pole connectors. Yeah, they seem okay. 
So I've connected them up to the Fuser 6 on how I'd expect it. So I've got the incoming tail here, just a short one because I'm not sure if the connector from the battery will directly fit that because the pictures I've seen would suggest it might be a bit of a squeeze because of the fuse here, which is a 25 amp fuse, which is probably going to be ideal anyway. Uh, the 991A is connected into the next socket up, which is also 25 amp fuse. And I made up this cigarette lighter socket, which came from a, well, I've had that for years when I built a battery pack for CB radios. But then I changed it to use as an adapter for, to a cigarette lighter on my old power supply, which is currently being used for my eye gate. And it had ring terminals on it, which I had to cut off, which I cut them off earlier in the day. Whilst I was doing other things, including looking for the tripod mount, because that had done a disappearing act. It was in an Amazon box in the kitchen, which I'm not too sure how it got there. So that's how, that's the arrangement there. So I can use that to plug a phone charger into to charge phones, tablets, that sort of thing. This just connects straight into the battery. And this is the 991's power supply. So I'm just waiting for the battery. That's probably going to still be a while. I'm going to just go back to Yodel and see where where the Yodel guy's got to. He is now still coming down Swaledale at the moment, by the looks of it. This, then there's eight stops between me and him, so there you go. <laughs> uh, it's now about ten past one, and I should have really been working today, but that's uh, only, I've only managed to do one delivery today, so it's not really been that helpful so hopefully in a little while I should have the battery in which to connect everything up and we can test to see if it actually works because the battery should come with some charge in it so it's a uh, life powerful so it's probably going to have to be supplied with a at a specific charge anyway I'm not a hundred percent familiar with life powerful batteries apart from the fact I know they're very light and they're a little bit safer than uh, lithium ion batteries that you find in everything else. Less said about that, the better. And also, they're, they're a good ideal replacement for the heavy lead acid batteries. So I've been using a jump starter as a, as a portable power supply, as well as to jump start my car recently, because I've been having some issues with, with the car battery running flat. But hey, what can you do? So... Just waiting for the LifePo4 battery to, to arrive, and I'll show you that when it gets here. Okay, so the battery's finally arrived, and oh, here it is. This is an Ultramax 22 amp hour LifePo4 battery. It's that light that I can actually hold it like that with just one finger, and it's not a problem. It does not feel anywhere near as heavy as an equivalent lead acid battery, I'd have to say. So it comes with this T-bar type connection and Anderson power pole connectors on the end. Off camera, I've tried that straight into the Fuser 6 and it actually fits. So that's the first part out of the way. So the battery's there. Comes with the charger with a LED indicator. So obviously red, it's charging, green, it's charged. So that's it there. Not tried the charger yet. It comes with a hopefully UK compliant plug. If not, I might have a spare lead that will fit. But it did come from a UK seller. Excuse me, try again. It did come from a UK seller. So I expect it will be fitted with a UK compliant plug. So I'll just pause and then we'll see if it works. Because I think I need a cup of tea to go with this moment. Okay, so tea has been partaken of. So the next job to do is plug this lead into this. Now I can either do it with the tails I've created, which would probably probably work, or don't don't mind sticking plaster that was due to a little incident with a safety cutter. So let's plug that into there. You can see these Anderson power poles will not fit that way no matter how hard you try. So if you plug them in the correct way. And it will mate and make a contact and I'll bring it up so you can see that we have a green light and that's a good sign. If it was a red one, the polarity would be reversed. So 
The polarity is correct and you can't reverse it at the battery end because it is keyed at a slight offset. It's not central. So if I tried re rotating that around, it wouldn't actually work properly. So we've got these two little caps over the battery contacts under here. So you don't get muck in there, which is probably a good thing. As I say, it comes in a nice little case has the charger which plugs into the side of it, which is actually pretty useful and some rather straightforward instructions just saying how to charge it, how to discharge it. So now we know that the polarity is correct, the next job to do is plug the main piece of equipment I will be using into the Fuser 6 and obviously the battery. So I'll just pause whilst I grab that. Okay, so we've got in front of the camera here, the Yaesu FT9918. So knowing that the supply is polarized correctly means I should have no problems plugging the power lead for the 9918 into the Fuser 6. So bringing the cable up now and plugging it in. Now, Given the, how much this radio actually costs, I'm expecting to be a protection diode in there anyway, should things go a little bit wrong. So, power. And there we go. So, it's on two meters at the moment. So, I could just do that, do that. So, it all appears to be absolutely fine. Now, I do know that in the in the display for the meter that is a VDD but that only shows it something when you're actually transmitting it's not going to do anything other than that so I like to put that on SWR for the time being so we know that works we know that's all fine so what if I plug something into the cigarette lighter socket so I've got the cigarette lighter socket which I know is polarized correctly if it isn't, I'd want to know why. So plug that into there, and I do have just the thing that's been here for a while. So, and uh, has a dead wasp attached to it, which is a bit annoying. It's been on this chair for a while, I've not moved it, and I've had a couple of wasps get in recently, which is somewhat annoying. It's been the summer, so that's probably how they've got in. So I'm going to plug that into the cigarette lighter socket and I'm going to be careful because I don't get stung because dead wasps can still sting. Which is somewhat annoying. Yes, I had to get rid of one earlier today. So let's bring the device in question into shot. Which is Thunderpole T800. Mine, not the Thunderpole donated one. No problem at all. There is a protection diode in this, because I have had the lid off. So if it wasn't right, then it wouldn't have worked. So, all is working fine. Everything's wired up, and everything that's plugged into there is running off the battery just behind here. So that's all good for 145 Alive, which is what, I've, what I'll probably use it for. It's also good for emergency communications in the event of something cataclysmic happening, like the national grid going down. Although, they say the chances of that's quite small. I wouldn't be too sure. Not in this day and age. So it's best to be prepared for that, we shall say. We'll leave it at that. So, got my battery. Got my radio. I can be in contact with the outside world in the event of a power cut. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all good. And I can charge phones off that as well. Although, in the event of a complete national blackout, then... You know, charging a phone would be a pointless endeavour. So that's it. I'm all ready for portable operations with this radio. Uh, I think the power level's set quite low on this at the moment. I'm not sure. Yeah, set to 5 watts, but I can turn it up and down as I desire. So I'm impressed by that. I've now got a full portable solution, and I can buy another one of these batteries at some point because it will be a good investment to have a couple of them. And... They'll just hold their charge for a bit. 
I'm not sure the full ins and outs of LiPo 4, so this is all new to me, because most of the batteries I've used in the past have been either lead acid batteries or, or in the case of CB at one point, uh, a hell of a lot of AA batteries. <laughs> but yeah, most, but mostly I'm um, a uh, sealed lead acid batteries, including the one that's in my jump starter. So if you're going to be on the air for 145 Alive, I hope I hear you. Uh, if I don't, then, well, that, that's no great loss. But, but I will be um, uh, recording for the 145 Alive event. I will be recording while I'm out and doing it. And I am going to try and go up to Wensleydale because this is a good place where there's, ha there's high points. And hopefully, all being well. I'll make some make some contacts on that day. So, first video I've done in a while, I think. First proper one. So, that Ultramax battery, I got it off eBay. If you just search for Ultramax 22 amp hour life po 4 battery, you'll find it. It's not exactly cheap, and not at all. And it should be more than ideal to run this radio. It will run a smaller radio. It will definitely run a CB for quite a considerable length of time. And also I've got my arrangement here where I can plug a, a, a mobile telephone charger into this cigarette lighter socket. Um, so I'm, I'm happy. And right, so I'll catch you in the next video. And... We'll see how we go with this battery because it's, it, like I say, it's all new to me and I look forward to getting out there and doing a bit more portable stuff. I know it's getting up towards the winter now, but I do have a mag mount antenna for 40 meters. So I can just sit in the car and play on 40 meters if I want. So, same three for now. I'll catch you in the next one.